Um, thanks for joining me uh, this morning. Um, my name is André Guedes. Um, I work for uh, Open Source Technology Center from Intel. Um, I've been working with uh, embedded systems and, and, and IoT development. Um, I'm, I'm mostly involved on, on projects related to enabling Intel platforms um, for uh, software stacks, uh, uh, IoT software stacks. And um, well, this, this presentation is pretty much about porting uh, operating systems and software stacks to, to Intel, platform, Intel MCU platforms. Um, yeah. So um, basically, in the past few years, we have seen a lot of new IoT, um, IoT capable or IoT driven software stacks and operating systems. Um, well, when we are porting um, those, those softwares for a new hardware platform, uh, it demands a lot of energy in the sense that you have to understand the details from the platform to do all the porting stuff. So this, this presentation is, it, it aims to demonstrate how we have done with uh, some, uh, some OSs. One of them is Contiki and the other one is Zephyr. Um, in the sense that it can help other guys uh, when you are coming to, 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 to port other software stacks for, for Intel platforms. So this is the, oh, you're not, it's missing the, the, agenda, the title of the slides. Can, well, the TI guy is not here. So guys, I'm sorry, it, it was supposed to have an agenda in the title. <laughs> um, but this is what the agenda is. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, Intel MCU platforms, just to, to to make sure everybody's on the same page about what kind of uh, what kind of hardware I'm talking about. Then I'm going to talk about the Quark microcontroller uh, software interface, which is um, a, hub, uh, a HAL for for those uh, MCUs. And then I'm gonna uh, talk about talk a little bit about how we did the integration with Zephyr and how we did the integration with Contiki, and yeah, then the final considerations. So that's that's not gonna work, I think. Um, guys, give me just one second. I will try to change the resolution here because it's not gonna work without the title. Just a second. Uh, well, much better. <laughs> okay, so the, the first one is the Intel Quark MCU D2000. Um, it's um, the, the core processor. It's uh, it's a 32 mega, uh, megahertz uh, clock frequency, and the instruction set is basically the same instruction set from uh, the Pentium 586, but we don't have a float point in support, right? Uh, for the memory subs for the memory system, it's a 32k flash, 38 uh, OTP for code, 4k uh, for uh, from OTP data. And AK for from uh, of RAM. Um, uh, D2000 has the most uh, standard I/O peripherals, uh, UART, I square C, SPI, and so on. Um, and it provides a few timers. Uh, one of them is RTC Watchdog, and some always-on counters, which is well, as the name says, the, the uh, they are always. Running if even if you are on a power state mode on a power state um, yeah on a power state mode so you can find D two thousand on this dev kit which is basically a, a breakout board for for the SOC um, it has a, an extra flash storage on board and a few sensors 
All right? And it's uh, Arduino Uno compatible uh, uh, interface, so you can use uh, your shields in this board. So this is the first, the, this is the first uh, SOC. And the second one is the Quark SC. Uh, from the processor core, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we have some changes on the memory system. We have much more uh, flash and much more uh, main, main memory, uh, uh, much more RAM. Um, regarding the I.O. peripherals, again, pretty much the same, uh, except that, uh, for, for example, uh, I2C, we, ha we have two interfaces, so I.O. on D2000, we have just one. And we have USB, I square S, and mailbox. Regarding times, it's pretty much the same. Uh, but the new thing is we have this sensor subsystem, which is an uh, ARC-based DSP, uh, which has floating point support. And it also has um, more I.O. interfaces. Um, yeah, I square C and SPI and so on. Okay, you can find you can find this SSC on Intel Curie module. Um, the Intel Curie module is a uh, Quark SC um, with a Bluetooth radio. Uh, it it also has um, this six ASICs accelerometer zero. And well, the Intel Curie module is you can find it on on our. Arduino 101 boards that guys are displaying on the booth upstairs. So um, regarding the, the Intel Quark microcontroller soft interface, um, the QMSI, which is just the, the short way to, to reference this, uh, it's pretty much a hardware abstraction layer for the Intel Quark MCU family. So uh, it, it, it specifies a lot of APIs to deal with um, the peripherals present, present on, those, uh, uh, on those microcontrollers. So we, you have a common way to access all the peripherals from different, uh, uh, fr from different microcontrollers. Uh, the good thing is it reduces the learning curve in the sense that if you have done some development for D2000, um, doing for Quark SC is pretty much the same, and doing for any other uh, future platform uh, <coughs> from uh, any other future uh, Intel Quark MCU, it should be the same. So the learning curve, we, we try to reduce the learning curve, curve with that. Well, currently it supports both, both uh, MCUs, and our current version is 1.2, which was uh, released uh, last, uh, next, uh, last week. Uh, actually, I did. I had to do some updates on my slides because some things changed. So, um, the QMSI BSP. The QMSI BSP is basically an open source implementation of the QMSI specification. Um, the BSP also provides uh, a bootloader. A, a few. A few. Well, BSP components such as a bootloader. Um, the bootloader basically handles a very low level um, setup from the, from the x86, such as um, it it um, set up the GDT, it set up, uh, it transits to 32 protected mode, uh, enables cache, and all, all this low level part is done by the bootloader. Um, the bootloader also uh, offers some high-level features such as uh, firmware management. And it basically, well, the bootloader runs on the OTP flash, right? It's not running on the, main, on the system flash. Um, well, it also, uh, the BSP also uh, provides the device drivers implementation itself. We basically provide um, uh, device drivers for all peripherals, the only one the only ones which are missing is I2S, SPI, and I2C is slave mode. For master mode, it, it is already done. All those uh, drivers are um, are provided via a via a, a static library, which we call libqmsi. 
So if you are in your project, if you want to use it, it you, all you have to do is basically include the header file and link against the libgmsi. Well, still on the BSP components, we have, we provide linker scripts and a CRT0. Um, so you can like use them to, to quickly prototype an application for an application or a port for your, for our boards. And it provides um, uh, new lib system calls, uh, just the basic ones to have an output working, uh, STD out uh, support, and dynamic memory allocation. So we, we basically provide uh, implementation for FSTAT, write for the system calls, and SB, SBRQ, K. Um, the QMSI also provides this uh, Pico printf, which is basically in a very short version of printf, which um, it basically supports the main uh, form formats uh, you, we use more, more often, which are like um, uh, integer, um, integer the decimal or integer uh, hex, and a few others. But for instance, we don't we don't would. Uh, Pico, uh, Pico printf doesn't support uh, float point uh, format or any other uh, not so often used uh, options. Uh, and finally, the BSP has a lot of uh, examples, uh, sample applications, which illustrates uh, we which illustrate how to to use the APIs to achieve things like um, I want to. Led uh, to to blink a LED, or I want to press a button on the board and have uh, interrupt fired, and so on. So basically, the 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 bare metal examples are for is to well they illustrate and they, they make it easier to test some features and just to or just to to know how to use the APIs. Um, the BSP is. Uh, uh, is BSD3 clause licensed. The drivers you can find on this link on GitHub and the bootloader you can find on the, that other link on, also on GitHub. So uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna go deep on, the, on the, the QMSI structure. So this is just the top level uh, organization. Basically on board we have well, the level board, the level uh, board drivers. Uh, on doc, we have documentation. Drivers goes all QMSI drivers, um, which are common to all uh, microcontrollers. On samples, those uh, bare metal sample applications I was talking about on the last slide. Um, the include directory SOC where goes all where we land all SOC specific files like uh, specific SOC drivers or the linker scripts because they change according to the SOC. Well, the system directory where we land the system the new libsys calls and the CRT zero, the tools with a few helper tools and then the USB which is um, we provide an, a sample of a USB device stack. Um, well, this is just a brief overview of QMSI. We have a, a talk just about QMSI on the afternoon, so I'm not going deep on this. Um, but I think this covers uh, pretty much what I need to, 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 to show and to, to, to discuss about how we did the integration with those old, with uh, Zephyr and Contiki operating systems. So now talking about how we did with Zephyr. Uh, just a quick overview about what, it, what Zephyr is. Uh, well, it's an open source uh, RTOS with a very small footprint. It supports a lot of architectures uh, it supports uh, networking uh, stuff like uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, IEEE 15.4, and Ethernet. And it also supports um, communication protocols, uh, I IoT communication protocols like Six Low Pan and uh, RT uh, RPL, Co-op, and MQTT. Um, uh, 
Well, Zephyr, supp Zephyr supports uh, Quark D2000 and Quark SE, right? It's under Apache license, uh, version 2.0, and it's available on, on zephyrproject.org. So, um, Zephyr reuse some of the components from QMSI, uh, and others don't. I'm gonna explain why, the, why we don't use some of them on, on Zephyr. And, but basically, first, the, the, the components that are reused, they, we reuse the bootloader. The bootloader is the default bootloader for Quark D2000 and Quark SCE uh, dev board port from Zephyr. Uh, it's not the default bootloader for Arduino 101. Um, it, this, uh, this make us to do some, uh, like I said, the bootloader does some, uh, some of the very low initialization of the x86. So reusing the bootloader enables us on Zephyr side to not do it again. So for instance, we don't set up the GDT because the GDT is already set up, uh, set it up by the, the bootloader. Um, for the device drivers, we pretty much use all of them. I have this mark right here because a few of them are not used. And I'm gonna explain why uh, on, the, on the next minute. minute. And well, that, that's it. The, those two are the components that we are reusing. We are not, we are not using the new lib system calls basically because the new lib system calls implementation from QMSI are based on top of QMSI APIs. And on Zephyr, since we, are, since we support multiple architectures, it doesn't make sense to, it, it makes sense to have a single implementation based on Zephyr APIs, which are gonna be used for all the architecture, or architectures and ports. So it doesn't make sense to, to, to reuse it on, uh, to reuse QMSI one, uh, the QMSI implementation, that's why it's not used. Regarding the linker script and CRT zero, uh, it, we, don't also, we don't use it also because uh, Zephyr linker script is very customizable. So depending on the kernel configuration, some parts of the linker script is gonna be changed. And the linker script from, from QMSI is basically a single static linker script. And so basically uh, we don't use it because of that. And the CRT zero, it doesn't make sense because well, it's very, tightly coupled with the linker script. So if you're not using the CRT, the linker script from QMSI, it doesn't make sense to use the CRT zero implementation from QMSI, from QMSI either. And well, some device drivers are not used. The, the ones are the interrupt controller, uh, the local AP timer and the mailbox. The reason we don't use the interrupt controller is uh, the interrupt, let's say the interrupt system from Zephyr is much more sophisticated than what we have in the QMSI. And also uh, Zephyr supports more than, actually Zephyr support, supports more SOCs, uh, x86 SOCs than what QMSI supports. So in order to, in order to have just one single piece of uh, uh, one single interrupt system for all x86, uh, or x86 SOCs, um, it doesn't make sense to simply use the QMSI one. The local APIC timer, it's pretty much the same because uh, local APIC timer driver, uh, well, it's used in all x86 platforms, not just the Intel MCU uh, platform, so that's why you have, we, ha we have our own implementation of local APIC timer. And for mailbox, uh, mailbox driver at the Zephyr side was developed first, then the QMSI, and it was working just fine and we didn't, once we had the QMSI part, we didn't replace it yet. Not sure if it doesn't make sense to replace it at the moment, unless we have some uh, different features, uh, missing features on, on one of those sides. Okay. So, um, to explain a little bit more about how we did the integration at the driver layer, uh, I, I have to just to show you guys 
how the device driver model from Zephyr works. Right? Uh, Zephyr provides a unified API for peripheral uh, access. So you have basically applications accessing peripherals uh, through that common API. Uh, the APIs in the top level include directory. And you have the device drivers implementing that API. Right? The device drivers are on the top level drivers directory. So basically, during kernel configuration, you select which, dri which driver you want to use. And then this driver is exposed via, via the, the common API from, from Zephyr. This diagram tries to illustrate what I was saying the last slide. Basically, the this is an, uh, an example with a GPIO, right? You have, the Zephyr, you have Zephyr GPIO API, which uh, the application user, user application is sitting on, on top of that. And under the API, you have different device drivers implementations, right? Um, well, and at the bottom, you have the, the hardware layer. Um, so what we did to, to fit in this model was uh, we came up with this shin driver uh, approach, which basically is a shin layer between Zephyr and QMSI. So what we do is uh, the shin driver implements the implements Zephyr APIs, and the actual implementation of the driver is done by the QMSI side. So we simply call QMSI APIs. Eventually, we need we have to do some translations regarding parameters from one API to the other, but this is not the case. This is not the majority of the cases. It's just for a few drivers. Uh, we need to do some kind of translation. And the, shin, the QMSI shin drivers, they are landed uh, in, the drivers, uh, in the drivers directory just like any other driver from, from Zephyr. Um, okay, so uh, the QMSI shin driver is, uh, is uh, the driver from Zephyr, but we still have to, to, to provide the drivers from QMSI. So what we did in Zephyr it was uh, we drop a copy of QMSI, a drop of, from the la latest QMSI release on this directory, which is the external HAL uh, QMSI. And when a particular driver, a particular machine driver is selected during kernel configuration, for instance, uh, RTC, when you select the RTC driver, uh, we build the QMSI RTC and we build the QMSI shin drive, the RTC shin driver. Um, well, this is the this is the default uh, for for the shin drivers, but we also provide an optional option on Zephyr, which is uh, which enables uh, you to instead of using the local copy of QMSI. Uh, uh, enables you to link against the libqmsi. So if, let's say, if you are experimenting a new feature and you did it in QMSI, um, you can, well, you can build the libqmsi and you can link against Zephyr and have this new feature exposed on the shin driver. Okay. This, this piece of code is just to exemplify what I was saying. Uh, this is actually, a, a re, let's say, a simplified version of what we actually have on the, our code base. I just remove things that are not really related to, to the integration. Um, so what we do is we have this RTC QMSI set config function, which is actually a function which implements the RTC API from Zephyr. And what, we, what it really does is basically um, calling the QMSI, which is this one at the bottom, um, uh, call, calling the QMSI function to actually config the RTC controller. So basically, it cops those, um, those parameters to our to QMSI configure, uh, configuration uh, struct and simply calls the, the set config uh, uh, API. 
right? This is similar to what we have to what we have in other APIs from from Zephyr. So back to back to the um, to that diagram, I just changed <coughs> one of those drivers to to show how the Sheen driver uh, fits on the on the architecture. We have the GPIO QMSI driver, which is the Sheen driver, and we have the QM GPIO, which is the QMSI driver itself. So. Uh, on an when an application calls an API on GPIO API from Zephyr, uh, the Shin the Shin driver uh, the Shin driver callbacks called, which builds the it builds any structure that it needs and it calls the QMSI driver, which then talks to to the harder harder layer. So the the highlights of this this integration, um, the QMSI Sheen drivers are used by all Quark MCU uh, based boards uh, from Zephyr, including Arduino 101. So all those um, all those demonstrations we have on the on Zephyr booth are using those drivers that way. Um, the Sheen drivers uh, approach enabled us to to rapidly. Uh, support most of the peripherals from Intel Quark MCUs. Actually, I was involved in the project, and I, I, I'm involved. I didn't say that before, but I, I work on both projects, right? I work on QMSI and I work on Zephyr project. But most of the Sheen drivers were developed by non-experienced QMSI uh, developers, and even if they didn't have a previous uh, knowledge about QMSI, uh, they were able to, to develop the, the drivers in a very good pace. Um, well, it also, we, we did had before some, uh, what we call the native implementation of drivers. For instance, RTC, we used to have an RTC driver on Zephyr, which was pretty much the same you had on QMSI. And while we were evaluating this approach, one of our concerns was the overhead, which could uh, be added by doing like, well, having a sheen layer on between the two, the two, the two drivers. And f from during our analysis, the sh we had the over the overhead was very minimal, because most of the time you don't have to do any kind of translation. If you had to do like uh, translate every single parameter from Zephyr, have like uh, uh, switch cases, if cases um, to check. Um, well, this could add more overhead, but as I show you, uh, as I, we saw in the RTC example, we don't have to do a lot of translations. So the overhead was minimal. It's like just a few bytes. Great, this covers um, pretty much the integration between Zephyr and, and QMSI. Um, as I said, this is the standard, the standard way uh, Zephyr uh, drivers are implemented for Intel Quark MCUs. And, well, uh, we, are, we are still developing uh, Every time new features comes from QMSI, we expose those features on the Sheen driver. Great, so about Contiki, um, again, just a brief overview uh, about what Contiki is before jumping into how we integrated Contiki and QMSI. Um, Contiki is an open source oper operating system for Internet of Things. It also supports multiple uh, architectures. Uh, it also has a lot of uh, communication, IoT communication protocols. It is BSD3 three clause license available on Contix site. And we have ports, uh, we have Contix ports for Quark D2000 and Quark SC available on our GitHub. The link is there if you want to check later. 
And we also, we also did a pull request for Contiki upstream, adding support for Quark D2000 uh, dev kit. So the integration um, between Contiki and QMSI was basically we provide, we, we, we have a helper script, which basically downloads QMSI and builds libqmsi and bootloader. So the user, all the user has to do is like make, uh, we, also, we, we also have, I think, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm missing, I'm, I'm confusing, but uh, we also had like a make a BSP uh, target. So the user don't actually runs the script, just runs make, B, uh, make BSP. And all the, the dependencies are, are addressed by this uh, helper script. In QMSI, we, in QMSI, in QMSI, we, well, we, <laughs> we, we reuse all the components out of the box, right? So you reu we reuse the bootloader, the linker script, and the RTC0, all the system calls, and all the device drivers. Uh, differently from Zephyr, we don't, um, we don't, uh, have a copy of, of the drivers. We actually just build and link against the libqmsi. Um, so uh, before that, we had no, uh, actually we had a Galileo port from qmsi, which we also developed. Um, but we didn't have any, any, any MCU support, uh, differently from Zephyr, which we already had. When the, when the QMSI uh, integration was uh, was started, and we did we had to we had to actually do the port itself to demonstrate the integration. So regarding the port, uh, Contiki has some porting Contiki is pretty straightforward. You just have to implement f for at least for an initial port, right? Not a feature completed for a port. But for an initial one, you just have to implement a, f a key subsystems from Contiki. One of them is the clock module. The clock module is the one responsible for, um, f well, for all the, 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 timer, uh, the timer libraries Contiki has, which is uh, these ones I listed here. Um, what we did was, we implemented the clock, the, the clock module using the, con, the interrupt controller timer. So the, the main characteristic, characteristic of this module is that it's a periodic one. So the RTC, sorry, the peak, the peak timer is, a per, you can set up it to work as a periodic. So that's why we use it. Um, another piece, from Contic that we that we needed to support was the R timer, which is a different timer from the others because it runs on a different um, on a different uh, timer with a different clock. Uh, sorry, with a different frequency. And what we did was um, we basically implemented that that library using uh, the RTC driver because this library is more like a kind of uh, set an alarm and fire me and wake, up, wake me up when, when the timer has expired. It's not like a periodic one. So the RTC, is, uh, the RTC support the, alarms, the alarm feature, so that's why we use it. And well, they, they also have the watchdog. Um, the watchdog support, which we used the the hardware watchdog uh, through the QM uh, WDT driver. Okay, so um, about IoT, oh, sorry, about IO support. Um, Contiki has no unified API, which which means that API IO APIs are platform dependent. And if you write an application for, uh, um, I don't know, platform A, which deals with IO, your application won't work on platform B unless platform B and platform A are very, very similar. 
like uh, and, um, they have one or two platforms that are very similar, so you can reuse it. But if it is uh, moot architecture, this is not going to work. The only exception they have is the serial uh, API, which is for output. The standard API is the C library, um, the, C li the, the functions that deals with output like uh, printf and, and its friends. And for input, they have this, uh, they have defined this serial line API, which uh, in our part, we didn't implement. For the, the fun effect of this is that, for example, to support the serial, serial output, we basically did nothing because we got it for free from QMSI, which implements the, the STD out uh, system calls. So for, we didn't have to do anything to support it. So what we have is, uh, the, as you guys can see, the architecture is a little bit different from Zephyr 1 because as long as Contic doesn't provide any unified API, applications use QMSI APIs directly. And some, of, some parts of the Contic core, which are hardware dependent, uh, they are also using QMSI APIs. So um, this is, illustrates pretty much the way things are organized on Contiki. So the highlights. Um, well, the initial Quark D2000 port was done in pretty much four small patches, right? We had one single patch which was adding the helper script, which some of you can actually say that it's not actually the port itself, so it could be three. Um, we, the second patch is basically adding the contic main file, which implements the main function, and make files, right? So in this second patch, all we had to do was basically write the main function, call uh, Contiki initialization functions to in initialize non-architecture non dependent parts like the scheduler, the, the process handling part, and make files. So the make files was basically, okay, I wanna use this linker script that, we, that came out from QMSI. I want to use those, lib, those uh, new lib implementations which also comes from uh, lib QMSI, from QMSI, and I want to use this uh, CRT0, which also comes from QMSI. So uh, a lot of, besides using that, uh, we also didn't have to, uh, we also didn't have to do any of the low level initialization from, from x86, because the bootloader is already doing that for us, so we don't need to set up GDT, we didn't need to, to set up IDT as well. Uh, so it was, for initial version, it was a very small patch to have, as a, a, to be able to actually build a Contic image uh, that we could flash on our board and test it, the basically part. Like, okay, uh, when you jump to main, initialize the basic functionalities, call my application, my application is just a real world. This was done in pretty much one patch, one small patch. Uh, and then we had, um, uh, yeah, then we had the, th the third patch, which was basically, let's implement the, the clock module, which was, the clock module is very simple. Uh, basically, since we didn't, have to, we didn't have to do any SOC level operation, not SOC level operation, but deal with SOC uh, level uh, information, such as, okay, how do I do to, uh, how do I do to configure the the the, uh, the APIC timer to work on a periodic mode? I didn't have we didn't have to read this back. It was just about calling a few APIs from QMSI to do to do this for us. And the third one was to uh, sorry the fourth fourth one was basically implement 
the, uh, the R timer uh, library. Cool. So once uh, we did it for the Quark D2000, we also, we were, we were, look, we, we were like, okay, doing for Quark SC should be even easier because we have, well, pretty much all the, the, the infrastructure is already there. So porting for Quark SC was pretty much two patches. One patch was, okay, let's move everything that are currently in D2000 um, directory, which is gonna be common between D2000 and Quark SC. Let's move to a common place. And the second patch was pretty much, let's build an image for Quark SC. So it was pretty much doing what we, we did for the second patch from Contiki, which was um, write the main function and write the make files to, you, to reuse the QMSI components. So it was a very, it was very, very straightforward. Once we had the, once we had already another QMSI based board. So doing for, I don't know, maybe the next one, it should be pretty much the same. Those components, like the clock, our timer, watchdog, and the STD out support, uh, they were, they are shared between the two ports. So we didn't had to actually implement the clock module and all those guys because they are pretty much the same. They can be shared between two between those two ports. And well, for initial ports, uh, I call them pretty much decent in the sense that um, well, they they support the main contig subsystems, right? And they already provide all I/O APIs for 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 applications. Like we provide that because you can access QMSI APIs directly. So for very initial ports, you pre, we you what we have is uh, access to all I/O to all I/O devices, and the basic system is uh, the basically uh, context systems are are uh, are supported as well. I, I compare this with uh, the Galileo port we did, where we did we had to to write everything from scratch, and it was very more, not say painful, but we had to do a lot of spec reading, uh, read x86 spec, reading uh, Galileo specs, and for for those two ones. Uh, you actually don't have, you don't need to do that. You don't, you don't, the, the thing is, you don't have to jump into the specifications in the data sheets to have a initial, initial, initial port for those guys if you are using QMSI. Okay, so um, final words. Uh, when it comes to Intel Quark MCU platforms, uh, QMSI is the way to go. Um, uh, QMSI abstracts away the peripheral uh, devices. So what I was saying in the previous slides, uh, you don't you don't have to jump into the data sheet. If you are if you are like doing an initial port, the first thing you, we have to do. I, I I've done contig ports for other platforms, and the first thing you have to do is basically okay. Let's see how the SOC the, the MCU works, and what are the registers? What should I what what register should I read or should I write uh, to like to have a transfer? And using QMSI, you don't have to do that because QMSI already provides an, an API, so you don't have to deal with the registers from the controller. You just deal with the API. For instance, uh, for a, a I square C transfer, it's basically you have a I square C. Um, a transfer API which takes uh, the buffer and the size of the buffer. And QMSI is gonna do that for you. You don't have to look into the I square C registers, how do I do a transfer and so on. So it's, it's very fast. Um, the APIs are pretty simple. I know this is subjective, but I, I, I think they are very simple. The documentation is also good. And if you are, as I said earlier, if, if you are 
looking uh, into, into how to use the APIs, uh, the sample applications are very useful. We basically have sample applications for every single uh, peripheral. Um, uh, another highlight is uh, using QMS IBSP components can really accelerate your, your parting effort because as, 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 I show, as I was talking about Contiki, it was pretty straightforward. Um, you guys can take a look at the, the GitHub, uh, the GitHub uh, repository and see the patches itself uh, themselves. It, it's very straightforward, and they are very, very, very small. Um, well, uh, Zephyr and Contiki shows two different approaches on how integrated with QMSI, and well, they they definitely they provide a guideline. If you are one, if you want to port another SOC or another software stack, such as uh, I was in this minute presentation yesterday, they have a, a HAL layer, so the approach should be pretty much the same approach we did in Zephyr, right? Because well, Zephyr APIs is pretty much in a, on a HAL layer as well, and but for others like. Um, the open thread, I, I, I remember I was looking into that code and I'm not sure they have such a, such a unified API for, for IOs. So probably the Contique approach, the, the same approach you follow, we did in Contique is the approach you could do for open thread. For Riot, I think they have a unified API. It's been a, a while since I, I, I look at the Riot code. Uh, so. If you are willing to port uh, Intel Quark MCU platforms to those software stacks, uh, you probably want to take a look what Zephyr and Contique, the, the Zephyr and Contique do and do a, a similar thing. Um, we have, I think, five to 10 minutes uh, for questions. And I, I'm opening to questions. Uh, yeah, um, well, this, this is true. This is something I should mention um, during my presentation. QMSI is similar, f for those from ARM world, uh, QMSI is similar to CMC's like core and driver components, right? So we, what QMSI does, it, it abstracts peripheral as well as it abstracts, not abstracts, but provides definitions from the SOC, like the, the microcontroller. Uh, we, uh, I particularly didn't did, did any kind of comparison uh, between CMCs and QMSI in terms of uh, memory. Uh, but regarding memory consumption on QMSI, uh, what we do is, all kind of memory, we, it's, we try to push it to the user in the sense that uh, if the user wants to, uh, for, for, for instance, what we are currently working on is uh, on power, power management stuff. So we have a power management functions which save context from, from peripherals. This, uh, at the QMSI layer, we got a pointer from the user. User is the one responsible for allocating the context structure. And well, in QMSI, we, try, we are trying to follow that approach. Like all the memory stuff, we are trying to push the user layer. And in order to keep like the QMSI as thin as possible, uh, we can achieve. Yeah. Um, to be honest, right now, no, because I'm fully focused on Zephyr. Yeah. Um, but 
Well, the, the, the goal of this presentation was like show how we did so others can do it uh, for other software stacks like Riot. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, sure. Just curious on Zephyr, let's say on the Quark D2000, what's the overhead you're getting, like memory water? We did, uh huh. We did, when we came up with this machine uh, driver approach, we did some measurements, and for, I don't remember quite the numbers, but it was like just a few bytes uh, per peripheral. Okay. Just, uh, we did, uh, uh, like, one of our most uh, concerns was, well, we might be adding a lot of overhead, and this is, well, if you are doing that, this is not gonna work, because we are already tight on memory, but, since the overhead was very low, like, as I said, just a few bytes, and the benefit was so huge, like, we are all reusing the same code base for driver, and, well, if we find a bug, we fix it in one place, and it's propagated to everyone, right? So that benefit was, um, well, it, it pays the price of having just a few uh, bytes on overhead. Uh, the text space, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have, we, we, well, back then we had this situation. We had uh, QMSI drivers almost fully featured and Zephy drivers with just a few features. Yeah. So comparing the oh, code no, size. I'm not saying you didn't take a good decision. No, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just to say that, uh, Simply comparing the code yeah. was not just a, it was not too fair because we, well, we don't have the same parity of features, right. so it was hard to, to tell. But what we did was, let's, well, let's compare the final size of the image and actually the the size of the drivers, in the sense that w this little glue code we have. Uh, how much impact, how much overhead it really is. And it was just a few bytes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> uh, more questions? Yeah, sure. How about the, take a quick look at the code, the, the blocking model, so you have a, it looks like you do, you do block transfers, and you're, you're waiting for the ISR to complete transferring the buffer. How did you integrate in terms of blocking with an operating system? Well, uh, what we do is, for transfers APIs, uh, we have two versions, one which is blocking, and the other one which is not blocking. So for the blocking one, it's pretty straightforward. You call it, and it re when it returns, then you have your data. And the other one is uh, we, you provide me a callback. So once my, the transfer is done, I will call you with the data. So we have two flavors. Any more questions? It's uh, kind of about substituting the uh, part of the uh, clock flake off um, functionality you did with the work on this guy in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So that's it. I will be here until the end of the event. So if you guys want to talk a little bit more, and well, I'm, I'm here and I'm open. Thanks a lot for coming.